Hello, I am Dr. Ken Ellenbogen and I am a professor of cardiology at the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Medicine in Richmond, Virginia. I am editor-in-chief of the AFibProfessional.org clinical community of the American College of Cardiology and the Heart Rhythm Society. I'm here at the Heart Rhythm Society meetings with Dr. Sana Al-Khatib, who is an associate professor of medicine at the Duke Clinical Research Institute and the Duke University Medical Center and School of Medicine in Durham, North Carolina. Sana, welcome, and it's great to have you here. At this meeting, you're presenting some interesting findings from the Aristotle study at our late-breaking clinical trial. Can you tell us a little bit about the Aristotle trial? Thank you, Dr. Ellen Bogan. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, yes, of course, the Aristotle trial was a, a multi-center randomized clinical trial that enrolled patients with either paroxysmal or persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation who had at least one other risk factor for stroke or systemic embolism. And those patients who fulfilled these criteria and agreed to participate in the trial were then randomized in a one-to-one -one ratio to either receive apixaban, uh, five milligrams twice a day or 2.5 milligrams twice a day versus warfarin. And this was done in a double-blind, double dummy fashion um, with a target INR of two to three. And uh, the trial ended up enrolling 18,201 patients, making it the largest clinical trial of atrial fibrillation to date that has been anyway completed and published. Um, and um, after the completion of follow-up in the trial, uh, the uh, apixaban was shown to be uh, superior to warfarin at reducing the primary endpoint of stroke or systemic embolism, as well as major bleeding and all-cause mortality compared with warfarin. So very good results. So really a fantastic shot in the arm for this particular factor, 10A inhibitor. It's great to have alternative drugs to what we ha only had before. We have now a lot of options to treat atrial fibrillation, a real big problem. You're presenting at the late breaking clinical trials. Tell me about your sub-study and share with the community what the results were. Of course, our sub-study had to do with looking at the outcomes of apixaban uh, by type of atrial fibrillation, and so we examined uh, how the uh, risk of stroke or systemic embolism, major bleeding, and all-cause mor mortality varied by type of atrial fibrillation and by uh, treatment. Um, and what we found uh, was that the vast majority of patients enrolled in Aristotle uh, had either persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation. Patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation only made up 15% um, of that population, but we found that people with um, persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation had a significantly higher risk of stroke or systemic embolism compared with patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, uh, and there was a trend toward increased mortality. When we looked at the effect of apixaban by type of atrial fibrillation, it was very consistent. It certainly led to um, significant reductions in stroke or systemic embolism, major bleeding, and all-cause mortality, regardless of the type of atrial fibrillation. So it was very good to see those results. So that should be fairly reassuring information for the practitioner. It often comes up, do we treat people with paroxysmal any different from persistent? They have increased risk of strokes. There may be some difference, but that this agent clearly prevents stroke in both groups. What are some of the take-home messages that we have for our general cardiology community that we can get from this trial? A couple messages you can tie it up for our audience. As you pointed out, I mean, um, we see patients with paroxysmal, permanent, and persistent atrial fibrillation in clinical practice, and we now have a bunch of different medications that we could use for stroke prevention, and this uh, study shows that apixaban uh, has uh, beneficial effects. Um, on really all the endpoints that we looked at, regardless of the type of atrial fibrillation. And uh, in our study, uh, although patients with persistent, uh, with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation seem to have a lower risk 
of uh, stroke or systemic embolism, uh, showing that epixaban was beneficial in that patient population, uh, hopefully uh, should make uh, epixaban a very attractive alternative to warfarin in these patients. So I think, uh, thank you, Dr. Al-Khatib. The results are, speak for themselves. And I think they're important results that hopefully will increase the use of anticoagulation in patients with atrial fibrillation. Thank you very much.